What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're gonna look at button pop-ups and hover-overs with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at button hover-over pop-ups. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so like I said, in this video, we're gonna do hover over pop-ups and uh, changing colors and things. So we've got a button here. I made it real big so we could see it. And when we hover over the mouse, the button kind of changes colors. And then down at the bottom, we get a little message popping up that says I'm hovering over the button in a little sort of like quasi status bar down there. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. And this is really simple. We've actually kind of touched on this a little bit in the past with bindings and things. And we was, we've also done a status bar down here at the bottom in the past. So if you wanna head back in the playlist uh, link below in the comments and check those videos out, you can. I will just go over it kind of briefly in this video. So I've got this new file, I've, I'm calling it hovering.py. Basic Kinter starter code, I'm using the Sublime Text Editor as always and the Git Bash Terminal as always to run this thing. And I just made it 500 by 400. So let's create a button and I'm just gonna call it my button. And this is a button and we wanna put it in root. We want the text to say, click me, <laughs> very sophisticated. And let's just make this a little bigger. So let's give it a font equals Helvetica. And let's give it a size of like 28 or something just to make it bigger. Now we can my underscore button dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y like 50 to really push it down the screen. Uh, there we go. Okay, so now we wanna create a little status bar at the bottom of the screen, a little label that will change whenever we hover over this mount, uh, this button. So let's call this uh, status underscore label. And this is a label and we wanna put it in root and we want the text to equal nothing right now. Or we could say te uh, test just to make sure that it's there. And let's give this a border of one so it's outlined, right? So that's what creates the little status bar thing. And let's give this a relief of sunken just to give it some dimensional views to make it look like it's sunken in a little bit. And then we want to anchor this to the east side. And that's the bottom, and that's the right hand side. So now we can status underscore label dot pack. And we want this to go across the entire screen. So let's go fill equals X. And we want this to be on side bottom. This will put it at the very bottom of our app. And then I'm just gonna give it a, an iPad Y of like two to squish it down a little bit inside of itself. We usually do pad Y to give it padding on the outside. iPad Y will give it padding on the inside. And just a, you know, a couple of pixels so that it's, uh, um, it just looks a little better that way. So, okay, let's go ahead and just save this for now and run it just to make sure this is looking okay. So let's go Python hovering.py. And we see down here it says test and that, that looks good. We've got this button and we click it, nothing happens. And we hover over it, nothing happens. So, okay, we've got our basic code going here. Let's close this. And let's get rid of this test. We don't actually need it to say anything right now. So let's come down here and let's bind this button. Let's, so let's go my underscore button dot bind. And we've looked at binding before. When the mouse enters a widget, that's the, uh, let's see, enter binding. So we're entering the widget. When the mouse hovers into the widget, or in our case, when the mouse hovers over the button, that's that's called enter. And when that happens, we want to run a function. Let's just call it uh, button uh, underscore hover. And that looks good. So now whenever the mouse goes over this button, this function button hover will get fired. It will, you know, it will run. So we have to create it. So let's create that now to find button hover. Anytime we're binding, we need to pass in something. I always call it E, you could call it event. It's the, the mouse event that you're passing in. So let's just call this E. We're not actually gonna use it for anything, but we still need to pass it in because the program will be looking for some parameter being passed in. Okay, so what do we wanna do? Well, whenever we hover over this button, we want it to change color. So let's go my underscore button, and then we can just pass in BG as one of the attributes of the button, the background color, and we could just make that white, right? Now we also wanna change our status label. 
So let's go status label dot config and give this a text equal whatever we want to pop up whenever the button hovers over. So let's go, uh, I'm hovering over the button. Woohoo, right? Okay, pretty simple. So let's go ahead and save this and see what that has done. Now we've got our button, when we hover over it, boom, it changes color, we get the little pop-up message down in the status bar. When we move our button or mouse out, it doesn't change back though. So we have to explicitly program our app to do something when the button leaves this little widget area, this button area, right? So let's do that real quick. And we've looked at this in, in past videos as well, but I'll just refresh your memory. We call my button dot bind again. And then this time, instead of enter, we want leave. So when the mouse leaves the button, right, then we want to run button underscore hover underscore leave or whatever, name it anything you want, but that's fairly descriptive. So button hover leave. So let's create that function. Let's go define button hover leave. We want to pass in that event. And again, we're not actually doing anything, but we still need to pass in that E. You know, we're not using it in the function, but it looks for it, so we need to put it. So now we want to change it back from white to um, what it was before. So the default color for buttons is something called system button face for Windows. So if you're on a Windows computer, you would just type in system button face. And each of these words is capitalized. So capital S, capital B, and capital F. And then for our text, we just want to delete whatever's there so that the status bar goes back to nothing. So let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this again. And uh oh, we have some errors. So let's, what did I do? Ah, button bind. Oh, <laughs> and we need a closing little bracket there. Okay, so that looks good. That should work. So let's come back here and try this again. Close the screen. So hover over, boom, it changes color. We get the little pop up message. We leave, boom, it changes back. The little pop up message goes away. And we can do that. Now you can change this obviously to any color you want. You can, if you have this as an image, you can change the image. We've actually looked at that in another video. So if you want to look back in the playlist for button hover image change or something like that, that'll show up and you can watch that. But it's the same exact concept, except you're passing an image in instead of just changing the color like we're doing here. And uh, very cool. So I like this little status bar. I use this a lot. It's just a, a, an easy way to make sort of a fake status bar pop up down there, you know. And I use that a lot. It's kind of cool. You can use different reliefs, uh, different sunken things, different border widths if you want to change the, the shape and the whatever of it. But uh, yeah, it works pretty good. And uh, that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to that channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So they pay just $49 to access all my courses, 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.